we have talked about, and I defined for you two weeks ago, this idea of dominant and recessive. You read about, watched a video on, and we discussed Mendel. And we said Mendel's laws of inheritance were based on the idea that there's one gene, one, one factor, Mendel called it a factor, that's dominant over the other factor. We said when we have dominant recessive, we give the dominant version of the allele, we looked at genes, and we said, look, today we know the factor that's inherited is called the chromosome, and that on this chromosome you have genes. And we said we inherited two chromosomes, one from our mother and one from our father. And on the same place on each chromosome is a gene. That gene is in the same place on every chromosome. So if this is chromosome number one from mom, this is chromosome number one from dad. We said this. We went over meiosis and how they separated, how we made copies of it, and we separated it. Dad can give us one version of the gene, and a, a dominant version. Mom could give us a dominant version, in which case we're homozygous. Dad could give us uh, the dominant version, and mom could give us the recessive version, in which case we're heterozygous. In dominant and recessive inheritance, one, if you have a single dominant allele, you have the dominant phenotype. Period. It doesn't matter what the other gene is. It could be AA, capital A, capital A, or it can be capital A, little a. It's irrelevant. You're going to have the dominant phenotype. What is that phenotype? It doesn't matter, but let's say for, for a moment that the, dom the dominant phenotype is red flower color. Let's say for a minute that big A gets you red. Let's say for a minute that big A gets you red flower color. So whether you have big A, big A, or big A, little a, you have a red flower. There's no difference. Do you understand that? The red is the phenotype. The color red is the phenotype. The genotype is either capital A, capital A, or capital A, little a. The homozygous dominant or the heterozygous. Are we clear on this so far? I think you agree that we went over this. Now, if you had the homozygous recessive, if, my, if dad gave you the recessive version of the allele and mom gave you the recessive version of the allele, if you got the recessive version from both mom and dad, what then? Well, you're going to get the other phenotype. What is that? Well, whatever, let's just say for, for sake of argument that it's a white flower. Is that clear? If you have little a, little a, then now you, the only way to get white is if you have two little a's. That is the definition of recessive. You have two phenotypes, three genotypes, but two phenotypes. There's two ways to get red. Is that clear to everybody? My made is that. Is there anything that's confusing about that? Okay. So, what about this incomplete uh, code? Let's just do codominant for a second. That's if you have dominant recessive. Now, what if? You have exactly the same situation. Notice what I'm doing. I'm just copying and pasting. Copying and pasting. 
exactly the same genotypic ratio, uh, genotypic combinations. But instead, these genes are not dominant recessive. What if these genes were co-dominant? What would, can somebody tell me what you would expect? Anybody? You can make a guess. First of all, there wouldn't be any little a. There'd be two alleles. That's a good, that's a good, that's, I like that. They have the traits, a good guess. So that's, that's a good guess. I'll give you a clue. You're not going to have two phenotypes. You're going to have how many phenotypes? Three. Three. I'm not going to color in the flower, but it's going to be a flower color, obviously, since this is a, a gene that controls flower color. Well, if you have big A, big A, there's not going to be a little a. Why is there no little a? Because they're codominant. There's no recessive. Little a, this, the lowercase letter assumes that you have. Well, little case suggests you have recessive. All right, so big A. So on these genes here, yeah, big A, big A. So if you have big A, you have red. That's, that's simple. If you have W, what do you think you get? We get one W from mom and one W from dad. What do you think you get? You get white. Is that making sense to you? So it's, it's the same gene in the same place on the same chromosome. It's just a different allele. But we're not going to use big A, little a because they're not dominant recessive. So it'll be big A and then W. And then, but what happens since you can get ahead of, these are homozygotes, right? This one's homozygous. And this one's homozygous. What happens if you get the heterozygous? They're co-dominant. So what does that mean? That means I get, I, dad gave me an, uh, an R because he was red. And mom gave me a W because she was white. What, is, what am I? Pink. No, that would just be a different kind. They're code. Is pink red and white? Yes. They're code. No, pink is a mixture of the two. Pink is neither red nor white. I can't tell you how many kids correct me every time I say, oh, that's a nice red sweater. It's not red, it's pink. Oh, okay. Because it's, it's, they're right. It's a different color. Right? So it's a different color. This co-dominant means you're both dominant. You both show up. So in this case, it would be white or red. So you would have red. Red shows up. And you have white. You have red and white. Red with white spots. And, now if it's incomplete, if it's incomplete dominance, then you get virtually the same thing as co-dominant. You still get three phenotypes. Notice I'm copying and pasting. If you have AA, it's red. That's still the same. If you have, yes, bless you. If you have WW, it's still white. But now if you have Now if you have A R R and W, what do you have? Now you get pink. Now it's a blending. It's a blending of the two. Now it's not red or white. It's neither. 
This is red and white. This is neither red nor white, is it? It's pink. It's somewhere in between. So now let's use an example that from the case study we've been working on with sickle cell. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things you've been looking at with codominance is blood type. And I literally sat here for an entire day, made a video, we talked about it, you took notes on it, A, B, and O. We had did a whole little, even little activity on it before we worked on this this week because I knew it was coming. You have three blood types or four blood types, right? We have A blood type. So this is the, blood type is the phenotype. Let me write that clearly so nobody makes a mistake with that. The phenotype here, what we see, the thing we see, not the genes, not the type of genes, but what do we see when we look under a microscope? We see A blood type, we see B blood type, type A blood, type B blood, type A B blood, and type O blood. Those are the types of blood we have. Forget the positive and negative. We have A, we have B, we have AB, we have O. Those are the types of blood. Are we clear on that? This is A, this is B, this is what? Is this something in between? No. This is what? A and B. It's both. So what kind of what kind of inheritance is it? Codominant. Both. So what do we what do we expect with the genotype? So now let's look at the genotype. That's right. But we're not going to put well the opposite. If it was dominant recessive, it would be capital A and little a. But it's not dominant recessive. It's codominance, it's big A, little uh, big B. So when we're looking at genotype now, there's two ways. Now, A and B are, are, are codominant. But when you see O, O is a strange one, isn't it? O is different. It's not A or B. Well, there's a reason for that. So when we write the genotype, instead of writing A or B, because there's three alleles, because there's three alleles, there's three, these are all on the same gene, on the same chromosome. So there's a chromosome. I don't know the chromosome number. There's a gene somewhere on that chromosome that is either A, B, or O. One of those three. Which is it? I don't know what se which sequence you, are, you got. I know I got O. But when we look at genotype, what we do is we, we pick a, a letter. In this case, it's I. And it's either IA or it's IB. And when... There's, you can have IAIA, IA. what blood type is that going to give you if you have IAIA? IA? A blood type. So you see, A blood type, this gives you A blood type. What if I have B, IB, IB? I have B blood type, easy peasy. So how am I going to get... Get, hold on a second before we... I know where you're going with that question, but just hold on a second. I don't want to introduce that yet. If I have IAIB, what, they, what, what blood type do I have? So if I get an A from mom and a B from dad, I have both. So I have AB blood type. So that takes care of A and B. They're codominant. If you have an A... And you have a B, your AB blood type. You can only get two of the three, though. What about the third blood type? 
The third blood type's O. And it turns out that O is recessive. So blood type is codominance between A and B and recessive inheritance for O. So what's the only way to get a recessive phenotype? Lowercase i. I, little i. In this case, it's I, O, I, O. So you only have, the only way to get O blood type is if you have two copies of it because it's recessive. But that also suggests that there's two ways of getting A. I, A, I, O also gets you A, doesn't it? Because O is recessive to A. And also I, B, I, O gets you B blood type. Now A, B is still gets you A, B. There's only one way to get A, B blood type. So that's codominance. That's an example of blood type in codominance and recessive inheritance. This is a great, this activity is a very great activity you've been working on for, for a week because it covers, you're forced to use both codominance and recessive when we're talking about blood type. But then on top of that, you look at sickle cell. When we look at sickle cell, now you have, you don't have capital and lowercase, do you? You have normal, you have, all right, so we have different hemoglobin types. That's right. You have normal hemoglobin type, normal hemoglobin, right? You have hemoglobin this, uh, that shows a trait, and then you have sickle cell. I have the trait. You have the trait, excellent. There's nothing, there's, there's, you're resistant, you have a superpower, you have resistance against malaria. We go together to somewhere in the, somewhere there's malaria, I get sick, you don't. I die, you live. That's excellent. No, I wouldn't go to no malaria, because if I marry somebody and I have kids, somebody that has sickle, my kid might have done, and I'm not ready to take that chance. Well, that's a discussion you take with a genetic counselor. So now let's take a look at the genotype. Hemoglobin is normal with the trait and then with sickle cell. Well, what would the genotype with someone for normal red blood cell, uh, normal hemoglobin look like? That's AA. They're homozygous for A. That's still one gene. I want to remind you, we're still talking about one gene on one chromosome. That can either be A or it can be S. There's only two versions of that gene. A version or an S version. If you have AA, you have normal hemoglobin cells, normal, no issues. No protection, though, either, right? And you might think, I'll never go somewhere where there's malaria, but there's malaria in a lot of different places, including the Met anywhere in the Mediterranean, southern Italy, Sicily. Uh, uh, Sicily is an island off the Italian coast. It's a very large island still. Uh, Greece. There's, there's malaria in all those places, and you'd have an advantage. I would not. A or S, AA is normal. The trait is, uh, if you have sickle cell, what do you have? SS. What is it you have if you have the trait? AS. Is the trait normal and sickle? No, it's not. It's normal until it's low blood, low blood oxygen and sickles. So it's not both at the same time, though, is it? So what would you call it? Incomplete dominance. You have incomplete dominance here. Not as clear as the pink color, right, and the flower, but you're not either. You're not nor. You either have normal 
You have sickle cell or you have something in between. In between. A mixture of the two. Not both. ABO, ABO blood group is both. Do you agree? Yes or no? With ABO blood group, you have A or you have B or you have both, AB. With sickle cell, you have normal, you have sickle, or you have something in between, someone with the trait. Do you agree with that? Do you see the difference? But what do you know? How many different phenotypes do you see here? Three. How many different phenotypes do you see here? Four. Well, four because there's three genes, but between A and B, how many different phenotypes do you see? Three phenotypes. More than two, correct? More than two phenotypes. With dominant and recessive, how many phenotypes did you have? Two. You either had the dominant or the recessive. Nothing in between, not both. You either have one or the other. That's dominant recessive. Is that everybody clear on that now? As we move forward, that's not going to be an issue. I'm going to post this tonight so that everybody's clear. In the other classes, too, because I haven't done any other classes like this. I just, we've done it like this, but you forget. You don't take notes. You don't study your notes. You don't go over it. So we just had to do it again. No, let, let's go over this really, really clearly. Wednesday, Wednesday... March, not ma not mock, March 13th. You have a DOL. You have a DOL. You're not, in, we're not in class. You're doing your DOL. You're presenting to PhDs and MDs. Yeah. Your medical doctors and and people that are in charge of the university hospitals internships, Cleveland Clinic internships, they're all going to be there. Oh, yeah. I'm not doing. Shh, we're not talking right now. You're listening. So that's what's happening tomorrow. Hopefully, you're ready. Irrelevant, whatever else happens. So that's number one. Number two. Number two, we have one week. This week, we're going to finish genetics. We have to. And you'll see why in a second. Well, the, the quarter ends. The quarter ends. I wish you guys would stop talking while I'm talking and really, and really just write this stuff down and think about it. We're going to finish genetics this week. We got next week, we're going to cover next week, we're going to cover evolution. Well, no, but a fish is an animal, first of all. A tetrapop, let's not talk about that right now. That's not really what it's about, but we're going to move on. The next thing after that week is the week of March... 20, uh, the week of March 25th. That is spring break. Until what time? What day we come back? Shh. 23rd is a Saturday, guys. March 25th through the 29th, that whole week we're on spring break. Let so I just I want you to write it down and think about it. That's it. So spring break is that week. You will have a spring break packet. <gasps> and you're just going to keep talking. It's extra credit. If you don't do it, that's fine. Doesn't count against you, but don't come to me asking me how you can improve your grade. Don't do it. 
He said, I'm just going to stare at you. Don't come to me after, listen to me. Don't come to, if you fail that OST and don't do the extra good, don't work through, through spring break. Don't, don't do the work before the test. Come to me after the test with those sad eyes that you guys come to me with and, co and come to me and say, what can I do now? I'm recording this and I'm telling you nothing. Uh, nothing. 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 I'm going to cry. No, I'm telling you when it is. I'm going to tell you where everything is right now. I'm going to tell you everything all right now. So you, all, you don't need to do anything but listen and contemplate. So there's an there's a extra credit break, spring break packet that if you do it and you, do, and you show me that you're working hard, I can work with you and you're great. But don't ask me. Don't ask me to make something out of nothing. I can't do it. Now, I, let me just focus on this. Then we are back April 1st, and we'll have one week. Then we'll have April 8th. We're going to have to cover, when we get back from spring break, we're going to have to finish, tie up all the loose ends, and cover ecology. So we'll have two weeks to cover all the stuff on ecology on the test. It should be easy because you got a lot of that in middle school. They do a lot of that in elementary school, so it should be pretty easy, hopefully. But if not, it is what it is because that's all the time we have. April. So again, when we get back from April 1st, someone close the door. From April 1st all the way through April 19th, we'll be working on content reviewing, uh, covering ecology, ecology and review. That's a lot to review. If, you're, if you haven't done that, that spring packet, that's going to put a lot of pressure on you. Is it a big spring packet? It's going to be substantial. It'll be a review. It'll, it should be pretty not hard. It should be probably three hours worth of work over five days. That's not a lot. Every five days? No. <laughs> three hours divided over five days. Oh. You, do, you divide it any way you want. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes a day, whatever, so, 20 minutes a day, whatever it is. Same day. That whole day. Just spend one day doing it. I don't care. But review <laughs> is the point. Then on April... April 23rd and 24th, you have your OST. Two days of testing. OST, bio, I do not know anything else other than what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you, what I know. Some of you that are upperclassmen will also have your English 2 exam, OST, somewhere in here. Some of you may be taking algebra. There might be an algebra OST in here. Some of you might have geometry. You're taking the geometry OST in here somewhere. I don't know the dates of those tests. Well, I do know, but I, I didn't write them down. So bottom line is, this is what you have to face. So the fact that we're going to miss April 8th because of an eclipse day and the fact that you have spring break are all great news for me because I'm doing not school stuff during spring break. I promise you. Can you give us something for the 8th? I'll give you something for every day. I got something for you. I, now, let me also be clear on something else. You have two, you have two different Con, listen, academy, extra credit, assignments. The first one covers everything in first semester. The second thing covers everything in third quarter.
So if you want that extra credit and you want that benefit of the doubt in case you fail the OST, because I'm not a good test taker, Mr. Mendoza, sometimes I don't, okay, I, I believe you in that, then prove to me that you're trying. Prove to me that you're trying by making sure your work is all done, turned in, or you have extra credit done, or you have makeup work done, i.e. Khan Academy, whatever it is, however you want to prove to me that you're trying. As long as I know you're trying, I can work with you. I can, we can look and see, give you alternatives. But I cannot sit here, I cannot abide you not doing anything, failing the OST, and then having me try to come up with some kind of way to help you. Help you do what, exactly? I can help you lie? That's not cool. You, we have to find a way to prove that you know biology. You prove to me you know biology, there's several ways you can do it. You can take, do your work in class. Turn in. Let me grade it. Do Khan Academy. Turn in. Let Khan grade it. Get an eight, a four, three, four, five on the OST. If you have a three on the OST, I guarantee you a minimum of a C on the in every in on every report card. The whole year. Guaranteed a minimum of a C. So we got three I don't know anything about anything else. I just know about biology. So you have, if you get a three on the OST in biology, you get a C minimum. So let's say you failed first quarter and you get a three on the OST. I will change the first quarter grade. If you get a four on the OST, you get a B minimum. So you see you got a C second quarter. I'll change it to every grade all year long to a B minimum. If you had an A, then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change it to an A to a B. Come on, that's not the point. You have to prove to me one way or the other that you know this material. If you score five on the OST, you got an A all year long. I'll go back and change every grade to an A. If you had an A, if you had a C, a B, a D, an F, it's all A's. Easy peasy. All you gotta do is fill out a form. You have to prove to me you know this material. I do not care how you do it. Passing this OST is one good way of doing it. It will guarantee you a high grade in your classes. If you don't pass this OST, it's a big part of your grade. It's going to be hard for you to pass second semester. If you don't, it's worth a ton of points. It's worth literally three letter grades. 33% of your grade is this, is this OST for second semester. It is your final exam. Fail this test. Fail this test. And you, you better have everything else done. You fail it and you have missing work. And you didn't do the extra credit. What do you want me to do? Yeah, you have to repeat the class. I don't know how. I, I know they said they're not going to have summer school or they're going to reduce summer school. I don't know. You have to, I don't know. I'm not in a decision-making position. I'm in the classroom position. So whoever's in charge of this stuff will figure it out. All I can tell you is you fail this class, you have to repeat it. You fail this semester, great. You have to repeat it. I'm telling you if you fail this OST and you don't have everything on point, I don't, you're probably going to have to repeat the class. I don't know. I just don't know. I wish I had an answer for you. I don't know. And not, not, it's probably not going to be in my class, but they might put you in biology with ninth graders next year. I don't know. I've done, I've, 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 I've had that happen. I've had kids repeat the course and come back in, take it again. I've had kids repeat it three times. The whole year, three times. Three times. Miss Feck had a kid, Miss Feck had a kid, Miss Feck's husband had a kid that repeated biology four times. Once in summer school and three times in high school. Finally, finally passed the class. 
Oh, he's like a senior in the ninth grade biology. It's kids that don't pay attention, man. It's not you. It's mostly not you guys. I'm just telling you that that's what's happened to people. Most of you are not in this position. Is that clear? Most of you are going to be fine. Are you hearing me? This is nothing to stress about unless you blow some work off. Unless you're unless you're blowing work off, then yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna if this you're gonna have if there's gonna be a consequence. I don't want to see that consequence happen to anybody. So that's why I'm telling you, do these things I'm telling you to do. Get the work done in class. Get the extra credit done just in case, and then pass this test and move on with your life. That's simple as that. After the OC, what we doing? Getting you ready for advanced biology. You have oh, you have internships this summer at university hospitals and Cleveland Clinic. We have to do some major molecular work. We're going to do some DNA extraction. We're going to do some protein uh, uh, mobilization on on agrose gels. We're going to do some work, but that has to come after we're ready for this test. In this room, we'll be here till June. June what? Oh. What if your internship start recording? Yeah. You have to talk to press. I have no I, I, I don't know how many times I have to say it, but I'll say it one more time. I run this classroom. That's all I know about. I don't want to speak about anything outside this classroom. Yeah. Uh, so like say you got an A right now at 100 and you spawn the OSD. Come bring it down three letter grades. What do you got? <gasps> <laughs> you got a D or a D? Probably a C, maybe a C, probably a D. So if you and then if you do the extra, then how much then whatever that, it depends on how much you do and how much you get done. And certainly it'll help you keep a C and, and not put you in a D, right? So that's a good example. Think about the example she said. What if you bomb the OST? So you can break down three letter grades. Now, if you do the OST, if you do the OST, that's if you score one on the OST. If you score two on the OST, you're in. Then if you score D, you can bring it down two letter grades. So you have this. Yeah. It's out of five points. It's out of five total, yeah. How many questions? I don't know. It depends on which day. So, so here's the thing. If you score two on the OST, consider it a D. So bring it down two letter grades instead of three. So if you bring it down two letter grades, you got you have a hundred percent. If you have a hundred percent, you're down to a C. So you want the B or the A? You better have the extra credit done. You don't want you fail with a one, and you didn't do any extra credit. Then you're down to a D if you have 100%. If you have, if you have 100%, everything else done. So I'm working with you. I'm giving you an option, don't, aren't I? If you fail, if you do the extra credit, do the con, do the spring packet, you walk into that test, you get nervous, you're sick, whatever. You have a bad test day, you fail the test, it doesn't destroy you. Don't do it, and it brings your grade down. All that hard work you did all year long, you have one quarter, that, one semester that's, that's a low grade. It's not the end of the world. It hurts your GPA. That's all true, but it's not the end of the world. It really isn't. It's only one class, one grade. Your life will go on. This will be a blip. In, this will be in your review mirror before you know it. You will not forget. You will, Medical school is not dependent on how what grade you get in high school, ninth grade biology. Come on, man.